Welcome to everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all the international community. We are here at Linea Pelle now and together and we start our industry edition. So we switch it from home edition to industry edition. And it's interesting to, during this edition to explain and to share to our social community, again, our mantra, which means inspire you through interview with visionary industry leaders, creators, and hot topic people that can model and can reshape the future of fashion industry. So, and I'm very, very, very glad to introduce you, Marianna Rosati, Creative Director of Drome. She's our today guest. Hi, hello everybody, and um, thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you to Linia Pelle for giving me uh, this opportunity to speak today and to be part of this project. Thank you very much, Orietta. Thank you, and really welcome, Marianna, because we like to uh, start and highlight the reason why uh, talking with you, uh, we discover this kind of fresh and full creativity and also sustainability, because you created a brand, which is Drone, and you built a brand awareness. So I think there are a lot of things to say, and I like to give you the stage and listen, what does it mean to build a brand awareness right now? So um, Drone uh, was born like 10 years ago. Uh, he did have his 10 years anniversary um, this past past um, 2019 slash 2020. And uh, bringing a brand awareness for me means bringing, bringing to life, first of all, a brand identity that can be strong and can be recognizable, um, bringing to life uh, a system and uh, of production and of, uh, um, pro of, of making projects that can be sustainable, but can also be uh, close to our needs and close to the needs of um, of the final customers uh, so being building a brand in this sense means curating every aspect uh, from the creative aspect to the um, project itself the communication aspect and the production as aspect as well uh, i come from a family that uh, has a long history in um, leather production and not only leather production also fabric production of garments of in a high-end luxury fashion and so i have been very lucky and very privileged to be able to learn from my family from my dad about the process of not only creating but also producing so i've been raised with the awareness and of how much is important um, knowing when your product is produced, how it is produced, and uh, how fair is um, uh, the work you create uh, for others and for yourself. So um, this for me has always been an important lesson in life. Uh, first of all, because um, it really gave me the opportunity to um, express my creativity through knowledge. Um, but also gave me the opportunity to challenge some limits of this of this uh, system. Uh, when we are talking about uh, the leather world, uh, is also a very delicate word to treat. And uh, I always like to underline the fact that I like to disrupt a little bit this word and a little bit the meaning of leather itself. Uh, that's why I never like to define Drome as a leather brand only. I like what I'm willing to do and uh, my process is ongoing obviously, is um, building an awareness of this brand as, a, as an image, as a, as a concept, as a silhouette, as a, as a woman that, um, that incarnates. My, my creativity, my sensitivity, and uh, what I stand for. Um, and obviously, uh, through what is my core business that in, in, has always been leather, but that then 
um, get translated also in other categories like uh, fabric or accessories and uh, building an identity most of all through the knowledge of material, the knowledge of uh, constructing the items and uh, the knowledge of, uh, of an Italian handcrafting that for me has always been very important and that has a, is at the base of our company and of our brand. So it's interesting uh, to talk about this disruption, and I'd like you to share with our community this picture that me personally, I love so much. And I wish, of course, uh, you love it, this picture, because we choose it from uh, what you was presented in the latest collection. Respect and this picture, what give to you in mind? Uh, well, for me, respect is a very, very important world, um, word in, uh, in life generally and uh, also in, in the work I do. Uh, yes, these pictures are, that we'll see through the presenta presentations are from the backstage of our last show, the one we did in February, just before the lockdown. And uh, um, for me, respect is a word that needs to be reflected in our, in our brand. Um, identity and in the way we do things. So first of all is respect for life and uh, as we we can see through the history of Drum, I've always been very keen in uh, representing diversity because I truly believe in the multicultural world. I've lived in many cities in my life and um, I, I love to know and discover new cultures, to uh, build a community made of these cultures. I, I love to discover um, and uh, uh, go deep inside uh, the matters of multicultural and multi in, in term, in, in how can I say it, sorry, uh, to the interferences of, uh, of everything that gets in life. So for me, it's, it's very important uh, to um, stress the fact that uh, I've always, 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 always wanted to represent all the different ethnicity um, as an image of drum, as a face of drum, sometimes also going against what is defined to be commercial. And I put it in brackets because it's a word I, I don't think it's bad, but it needs to be treated with um, very big delicacy. And um, sometimes it has certain limits that for me are like simply not right. Uh, so, um, as, as I said, this respect for, for also like uh, for what is going on now uh, in America and uh, what is that is something that was just underlying uh, uh, living there uh, for a long time and now is basically like again as sometimes it recurs in history comes comes back. Uh, I'm very sensitive towards this matter uh, for this very reason. And that's why, for example, as, uh, as Drome on our social media, we stopped posting about anything that regards our product. Uh, trying, we stopped trying to sell our stuff to just give space to uh, the voice of education because I think it's a good time, it's a good chance to educate ourselves, um, to know more about the um, uh, cultures that are less known and about uh, respect for for human life and uh, for human beings doesn't matter what color uh, or what religion or what uh, sexuality or what I, whatever else so respect for human life first of all and for human beings first of all that's very important and this it's not just about um, the diversity of, of the show and the face of the shows we do and the faces that represent drone, uh, but is also a respect towards the people that work for the brand. So what I mean is um, our team, we are a small company, it's not a big company, uh, we are mostly family run, um, but we do work with, uh, with people that have been working with us for years and years and years. And uh, so also respecting this kind of relationship is very important, respecting the environment we work with and we live in. Uh, so we work with a lot of small uh, manufacturers in our, in, in, our, in our area and in Italy in general and uh, it's very important to respect their needs to respect uh, their um, 
the um, ability of, of creating amazing products and uh, very beautifully made garments and uh, um, of their um, commitment to work with passion and with uh, a strong, strong knowledge of what they're doing. So a big heritage. We have a big heritage. So it's also respect of this heritage as well. Um, respect also for um, when you work outside of Italy, that it can happen. We don't do it very much, but I know that it can happen. Sometimes you can do some embroidery in India, for example, or you can do some knitwear in China. And there's no problem about that because they, have, they are incredibly skilled. And there are companies that are working fairly uh, also with their, um, uh, with, with their workers, but it's knowing um, who you work with and be transparent of where where you produce your things and uh, how and uh, how you you then um, you know check on uh, on uh, on how fair workers are paid or how fair workers are treated in also in other country but only also in Italy so that this is another sign of respect it's not just respect for the workers but is respect for the final customers that goes uh, to buy our items in the shop because it's a way of respecting their trust, the trust they put in our brand and the trust they put in buying a jacket of drum or pants or whatever. And so respect is a very important word and, uh, you know, has many meanings and I'm very willing to discover even more <laughs> and to um, apply it even more. So I like it in this point that you already switched the word of sustainability that most of us uh, doesn't want to use anymore. So in words like respect, uh, responsibility, and also talking about community, like a local community, so which could be Italian, but not also not Italian. So do you think that building a brand awareness where creativity and responsibility merge together. So is this possible? I, I think so, but how can you connect the two elements together? Well, um, absolutely, uh, absolutely is possible. Uh, creativity, it's the word that says everything. Uh, you need to be creative in, in inventing solutions that are not there. So if a solution is not there under your eyes, you've got to think and apply your uh, clever mind and your instinct to try to find solution in order to make things work the way you want them to work. So the first thing you need to have is purpose. So what is your purpose? What is your goal? What is uh, what you're willing for, for your brand and, uh, and for yourself and for the people and the audience you're talking to. So that's the first thing, the first step you've got to access in order to then create um, something new. And uh, responsibility is also very important because you need to be, you are responsible for what you communicate, for what you say, for what you create and the way you create it. So how do you merge them together? Um, about knowledge, it's all about knowledge, it's about being aware and being um, very lucid about uh, how you do things and, uh, and um, not hiding behind masks, but being transparent. That's very, very important. So you really need to, uh, if, if something, you know, talking about sustainability usually is always being connected and it's rightly connected to environment sustainability, which is a, a big thing. Uh, when we talk about leather, it's even more delicate because uh, leather, as we know, it comes from an animal. So there is a big talk about how fair it is to kill animals to create garments. Uh, we do use, um, as a choice, since drone was born, we don't use material, we only use leather that comes from, from the food chain. So we, I've never used fur, I've never used crocodile, I've never used um, exotic animals that are only killed for their skin, but only uh, material that comes from, from the food chain. Um, and we work with a very limited number of uh, producers of uh, the tanneries, for example, uh, because we believe in building with them a strong relationship. We believe in uh, growing together and try to find together ways of, uh, um, of to make uh, the process of producing more sustainable in terms of environment. 
and this is obviously uh, important important to talk about like how much water you use or how much chemical how many chemicals you use and what kind how much waste do you create and this is not only about um, making a leather and making like physically making a leather it's also about how much um, leather you order or fabric you order um, how many collection you create that's also about uh, sustainability now it's uh, it's a bigger it's a word that grow, is growing bigger and is exploring new um, new aspects rightly because it's not just about chemically being uh, you know uh, sustainable is also about how many you know until now until this pandemic hit us we were working at incredible speeds like we were producing and making collection one after another uh, pre-collection cruise collection capsule collections main collection show pieces um, special projects for special shops uh, special projects for with special brands it's creating 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 so what happens is that creativity drains because you cannot squeeze it that much uh, not only you create so much product that there is no audience for all these products so we create a massively um massively uh, over oversized i don't know number of of clothes of, of stuff that basically invades the shops and then it stays there and then it gets sent to outlets or wherever else and it's like it's like too much and every time we produce garments we order materials and we always have to order more than what we actually consume we have a, a, a storage full of fabric and leather that we're not using and so i'm committing myself to try to reuse it in a clever way because it's a waste and we don't want to create waste that's the purpose so what is your purpose try to limit the waste you you are currently creating how do we do it we are applying ourselves to, to find the solutions and uh, we have projects going on and um, to try to, to respond to this problem. And uh, it's an ongoing creative process and uh, we all need to be aware. When you become aware of a problem, you can then access to the solution to solve it. But first you need to acknowledge it. So we are acknowledging, sorry for my English, uh, the problem and we are, um, we are trying to find solution that uh, can be, can be uh, adopted. It can be sustainable. I can so I, I, I really like it that you touch at some of the points that, so just choosing, just few supplier making a connection respecting the suppliers so which means so this is also the respect that we were talking before and even you say um, making a choice on uh, having more knowledge because I do think that using letter and I give you an example so somebody asked uh, what do you think about the rise of veganism? So, which is the matching between veganism and consuming meat? In our opinion, of course, and then we want to listen your opinion. So, sustainability is not only the don't kill the animals. Is be aware that what we use for our life don't have to be transforming waste. So we don't have to make any types of waste. So people in the world can make that choice for their body. Absolutely, to absolutely. Which is your opinion about this? Well, um, it's absolutely right. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Sustainability is also uh, not uh, trying to create less waste possible. And uh, obviously using leather to create garments is using something that would otherwise thrown away during the food chain process. And that's absolutely what, uh, uh, that, that's why I'm using only that material and I'm not using material of, uh, of animals that are killed just for their skin and not because they, they are part of the food chain. Um, on the other hand, about the, the rise of veganism or vegetarianism or whatever, um, I absolutely um, 
um, respect the, the choice of, uh, of the people that go through this process. Um, I, I know a lot of these people and I have with them very honest conversations about it. And uh, um, it's a choice and uh, it's definitely something we need to be aware of. And uh, uh, I don't know if in the future it will change our way of working or our way of thinking. What I know is that we need to be open to the idea that that could happen and we need to be ready for the world to change again. I don't like to just close myself in the idea that nothing can ever change just because it's, um, I'm in a safe place, I'm protecting my comfort zone. What it's beautiful and more new, interesting always comes when you step out of your comfort zone. So if at some point we'll not be able to use leather anymore for any reason in a few years, we'll all have to create and invent another way of, of uh, being ourselves and communicate ourselves and we'll do it. And uh, I, I strongly believe that is uh, it's it's part of uh, of of being aware of the world we live in, and uh, and also of the challenges that it uh, have us to face. And uh, definitely, yeah. But I, I respect that entire world because it's a strong choice, and uh, and uh, I you know I can't say oh it's bad or oh it's not right or it's like uh, stupid no it's not it's a choice it's a, it's a choice that is supported by certain beliefs and uh, i don't feel like i'm the one to say that they're wrong not at all yeah so in this case uh, i've seen another element very interesting in your concept the human feeling so i do you are light this human feeling in the work you do in choosing the material in choosing the shapes also and creating your concept yeah well um i always i'm a very emotional person <laughs> so everything for me needs to start from an emotion and from a sensation so that's what i like to transfer uh to to my clothes and my collections that's why drama has never been a collection of pure product even if it was born as a, as a leather collection and therefore it could be categorized straight away in a, a com complementary collection, which means like a collection made only of product. Um, I've always wanted it to be an emotion. So uh, starting from the concept I built uh, to create the collection to the colors I choose uh, every time someone steps into my world. Now we opened in uh, February uh, our showroom in Milan, our headquarters that I'm very proud of after 10 years and unfortunately has been closed <laughs> since everything happened. So we didn't use it that much. We didn't have the chance to welcome as we would, li would have liked to uh, our customers, but, but it's there and uh, it's the soul of this project. And uh, I want, I'd like that when people step into that space, and see the chromatic energy of the collection and feel the emotion of, of seeing the collection, of seeing the imagery, of seeing it's, um, it's emotional. And then you go and see and you go and touch and you pick your jacket and you pick your trousers. But first of all, it needs to be emotion, emotion. That's why all this talk about not doing fashion shows anymore or um, everything becoming digital and virtual. I am not that convinced that it's gonna go through because uh, yes, now we are all in that wave, but I'm already hearing different opinions that are rising from customers, for example, that if one month ago they were saying, oh no, our campaign will be buying only online uh, from now on. Now they're saying, oh, I, re I will really miss the, the ex experience of the showroom, the experience of touching the clothes, of seeing them, of trying them on, of actually getting in touch with the collection and with the human being. So, uh, I mean, I think I'll come to Milan or I think that I'll, uh, anyway, I don't think that I will just do everything online because it's so cold and it's so impersonal. So we need this human touch. We can, you know, we can rely on technology as much as we want. We have to be dynamic in accepting technology and in using it and obviously in evolving through it. But Human feeling is important and needs to be there, at least from my side, it's an important aspect uh, that is not only like creative, but is also a connection. Um, there is something special when you physically connect with someone and uh, nothing compares. You can write to someone as much as you want. Uh, you can have incredible um, conversation 
through a phone or through an email or through a Zoom, but it will never be like looking at someone in the eyes or having this human touch. And that is the same with clothes. It's the same, is the, you know, the feel that a fashion show gives you. It's, it's not like looking at it through a screen. And can I, I really like to jump inside of the conversation because you say something that in the previous uh, interview a couple of weeks ago, we had an interview with a chef, a Michelin star chef, and also a creator, a designer of that. And it was so interesting to analyze another aspect of sustainability, which was uh, since uh, we missed something like hugging, touching, feeling by hand, this kind of desire is growing and growing. So the fact is that desire means that you really have sometimes without some details will be more evaluated on so something that you miss it. I'm totally agree with you and yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of everything is technology, but in a certain way, sometimes smelling, touching, feeling in the, in the interior part of your hand is one of the elements the material gives you most. Absolutely. I don't know. Uh, a feeling or a sensation is given by all the senses we have, like smelling something, touching something, hearing something. It's like a, the ensemble of, uh, of the, fifth sen the five senses we have. So obviously it's stronger when it's live and when you're there and you can actually experience it. So uh, yeah, this is about human feeling and uh, we'll see. We'll see what the future, how, how we will shape it. So, you know, I'm still, I'm still wondering and thinking how the next, um, in how, what will happen in September. We still don't know what will happen with Camera della Moda. We are members of Camera della Moda because we show, uh, since two seasons ago, we started to show uh, officially in their calendars after having shown in Paris for many years, we moved back to Italy and uh, that was very beautiful. And uh, um, Camera della Moda really welcomed us very kindly and nicely, giving us a nice spot and being very kind to us. Um, but also, um, you know, it's like, we don't know what's gonna be next how we will shape uh, the next fashion week, which obviously will be different and will be, you know, we'll have to, to create a different way of uh, making our uh, message uh, travel to the, to the press, to the, to, to the audience. So this is a big challenge and uh, I don't have the answer yet. So it's, uh, it's one of those ongoing thoughts that I am now, you know, trying to figure out. <laughs> think and, and try to figure out. So in this case, your responsible action, it's something that you already answered to us. <laughs> I think we, we already have this kind of point. Let me switch in another point that you, that you, you touch it. So experimenting with materials and looks and uh, using technology, maybe this can be also a point to experiment uh, to new material. I give you an example. Somebody in the question asked, did you never try to use uh, fish skin or kangaroo or other types of uh, no material, which means uh, uh, compound of different types of fiber? Is this your way to experiment or you, are you using another? Uh, not really. So I never use kangaroos because I, I can't. <laughs> it's like kangaroos, horse leather, I can't. Horse leather, I love horses too much. I cannot do that. And kangaroos, I don't know, there's something about it. I don't want to use. Like, I don't know, it's an instinct. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Uh, fish leather, no, I never did it um, because actually I don't like it. I am very like, straight about it you know, I use only what I like it's not that to be creative I need to be weird not at all I use three materials literally <laughs> I use like a nappa lambskin sweat some you know, anything that gets created into uh, manipulating nappa or sweat or surfaces in a way that they can communicate what I want and they can um, 
uh, how can I say, uh, embody a feeling like, I don't know, in the last spring summer so uh, the inspiration was uh, a book about decor uh, from the 80s that was called Decoration and uh, where they were displayed these beautiful houses, these beautiful uh, hardwares and uh, furnitures and uh, sofas and uh, it was so beautiful. The colors were amazing and the feel of those houses was like wow I mean I want to date the collection of a woman that is living in these houses and then I connected it to Scarface which is a movie I really love and I thought that you know the meeting between a woman that is something like the cross between Al Pacino and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer of Scarface would be the perfect woman to inhabit the house. So I started to look for colors and leathers that would reflect the surfaces of the house. So I don't know, it, it is like a very, very, very thin leather that looks like an old sofa, but it's like, looks vintage, but it doesn't have the raw vintage feel. It's quite sophisticated and gets, um, and uh, it's not, um, doesn't look like used in the terms of distressed. It's a different type of, uh, of, um, of feel in a way. So that's for me is the researching. That's in that way, not just because I need to be experimental, I need to use weird materials just because they are experimental. I've used them, I've used them because like in the past, I fell totally in love with this leather that was luminescent it was like reflecting every color it looked like a, a big you know like charms like the the wrap of a charm it was beautiful i loved it and uh, and i used it and i was totally in love with it. it didn't look like leather it didn't feel like leather but i loved it because it had this kind of space feel and uh, it was incredible and that was because i fell in love with it but not because i looked for something weird because that makes me cool or experimental. No, I can, sometimes I use very few materials. I, I just try to use them, um, experiment with shape, experiment with lightness, experiment with mixing it together or mixing it with fabric. I like, for example, when I manage to mix leather and fabric together that you don't know when leather starts and fabrics and then it finishes and then it starts fabric. It just is also melt so fused together that you don't ask yourself what it is. That's my, sometimes, I'm saying something that probably is very weird, but um, you kind of, um, I kind of start from the idea of, to, uh, how do you say in English, to cancel the idea of leather from someone's mind because I don't want them to see that. It's like, I want to see the feel of it and then, Leather brings it, what brings leather brings the luxury of it, the touch, the naturality of it, the, the, the soft, the softness, the, the beauty, you know, the, the heritage brings all of this that, that is a massive plus and that is obviously a strong point. Yeah, and again, I like it to jump inside because you are really taking to all the community that is listening to us right now and let me tell you that we have so many people connected. Maybe you don't see now. <laughs> because you are taking the element of creativity. Finally, during this kind of disruption, we are taking back the creativity elements. So you have an idea in your mind, you have a concept, and then you look at for the right material to adjust and to be closer to your idea. So it's really interesting, the point that you're not looking for that specific thickness, but you are looking for that specific image so yeah. this is the vision. This is the beauty of the creativity. Yeah. And, and yeah. yeah. How, and how can you express this when you when you speak with your suppliers? When you explain to them uh, that you want to melt, you want to mix uh, this kind of material. How can you, you can uh, express your vision? Well, it's a lot of talks. <laughs> it's uh, well, you know, as I said, because we work with. Um, a very small number of suppliers and we do 
trust them and we have a, an honest conversation and a good conversation with them. It's all about uh, discussing what we want to reach and how we want to, uh, to do it. So we go through trying things and uh, let them, you know, let them experiment with surfaces, let them experiment with uh, lightnesses and, and colors and, uh, and everything else. So it's, it's about conversation and, uh, you know, pushing people, not accepting no for an answer, for example, that's another thing I do. You know, like, well, can I do this? No. Well, wait a second, don't say no straight away. We have to try, we have to understand how this can be possible. And uh, maybe it cannot happen the way I think it's gonna happen, but maybe it can happen in a different way. So we just need to understand how to, uh, how to treat the, the problem, uh, if, if there is one. So, so yeah, it's, it's starting from, for me, it's always starting from a concept. Then obviously in a collection, always there is a commercial side that needs to be respected as well and needs to be looked at. And uh, luckily we have a strong uh, base of, of items that we continuously sell that are basic like, like carryovers uh, for our customers that I you know, always have to repropose re and re reinvent and, uh, and take care of even if sometimes my creativity and my ideas want to fly more far away and you know you need also to understand how to bring along the commercial the commercial side but it's all part of trying to see a, a total vision um, a united vision of the project and try to make it m the most unified that you can yeah so great i think it's so interesting so in this case you already answered to this point, material versus, versus concept. So you, you get to ask the answer. Concepts are the main inspiration are, and are the main driver of this kind of point. But let me jump you in another point, which I think it's so important in Rome, in your creativity, which is the, which is the genderless. Uh, what's genderless is, in your opinion? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, this is another big word that has been overused in the, in the, in the past uh, times. Uh, well, um, what is it? Uh, obviously, we are talking about like sexuality, not even sexuality, I don't know how to explain it, but um, it, it's something that can be worn uh, you can wear your boyfriend jacket, you can buy, wear your boyfriend trousers, and you know, you, things can be unisex. Uh, now, obviously, I create a collection that is dedicated to women, and uh, that is anyway quite feminine, and it's not genderless. Um, but I like always to infuse it with a lot of items and inputs and feelings that come more from the uh, menswear, more from the men wardrobe, uh, because I really like a femininity that is not um, too uh, lazy or that is not too direct and that is not, um, how do you say it, like, um, girly girly i'm a very romantic person and i love romanticism but i don't want it to be like cheesy or or too romantic or too soft i like strong women and i like strong femininity that comes from hard lines so maybe that can be a, a touch of genderless in, in terms that uh, sometimes a woman is tends more to be like soft and uh, super hyper feminine but for me a man's coat with big shoulders and uh, a very masculine um, fabric or leather can be hyper feminine and super sexy so it's really what the perception of this item and of uh, your body is that count in this uh, in this matter i think so in this case uh, we wanted to touch the very two very important point of genderless, which means sizeless volume and timeless style. So you already get some very very detailed example like big shoulder, uh, big sizes. So, but we noticed that these are uh, requests mostly from Asian markets. So, uh, which is a market you think and understand much better your uh, your genderless 
or yeah. your wishes, where goes to you? wishes in this well case. so me myself like i always loved oversized clothes and uh, playing with weird pro proportions and uh, uh, really playing with like big massive shirts and uh, uh, big coats and maybe small skirts and uh, playing with big and small and uh, mixing them together and i've always found in all my life an enormous inspiration from Japanese people and the Japanese market for example because I've been going to Japan many times luckily in my life and uh, I've had the enormous uh, privilege of witness how elegant they mix together these uh, the items they wear how you know how effortless is their style, even if when it's very constructed, still is effortless which effortless for me is another important word is a key word because uh, silhouettes can be complicated and can be um, articulated and an item, a coat can be articulated in its constructions, but then when you wear it, you need to wear it with an effortless attitude. And that's what makes you interesting and sexy and daring. Uh, because if there isn't that point of being daring, of being, studio, of, of being attractive in that way, of being like not resolved, uh, is um, that that's nothing if you know everything about something and if you if you know what to expect there's no interest right you, the interest is completely killed so uh, so yes definitely uh, um, for certain type of volumes I create the Asian market is a market of reference although it's true that uh, um, Asia is big and you you know obviously uh, Chinese customers have a different uh, perception of volumes and uh, they like different smaller things they like uh, more sexy silhouettes. Uh, um, maybe the Japanese and Korean have a different perception. Uh, it's, it really depends by the market. We are very strong in Russia, where uh, definitely oversized is not like a big thing. Uh, but you can, but they are uh, very, very, the custom, Russian customers are very attentive to what goes on around them and they're very, they're evolving very much. When I've been visiting Russia, I've been very surprised uh, by, you know, how moving is their market and their sense of style so uh, you know they are attent attentive to what goes on and so they are open to experiment as well although of course you know uh, their physicality requests certain things um, European physicality requests other things that are more in their culture more in their way of of, uh, of dressing so it's uh, a collection nowadays it needs to be also quite transversal in the way you you build your product so um, there are I like for example this show we did in Milan in February had this big oversized coat and then they were the extra large size and then there were the small size which was a reducted um, version of the big coat because maybe big coat it's for a very small niche of people, but maybe that same shape on a more reasonable size can be very beautiful and elegant and can be more can be approached in a, an easier way from a larger number of customers. You need to also, in a way, respect, again, this need, you know, you cannot just... I want to jump to, with, with a couple of questions that we have. I think always related to material, but I think they can be connected with this kind of sizing. So, uh, do you do you like to combine wool and leather, and maybe playing with a double side or inside lining wool and outside uh, wool or knitting and wool, so or reversible leather? So. Have you ever tried it? So would you think about this kind of reversible that sometimes can be also one of the elements of timeless? Absolutely, no, absolutely. I, uh, lots of our winter coats and outerwear are reversible. And uh, I often, very often mix uh, wool with, uh, with leather, with shirling, uh, in outerwear, uh, sh um, leather or shirling with nylon, uh, or also with knitwear sometimes, if it is washable leather. Um, yeah, I definitely like and love to do that. And I've been, it's been like in present in Drome, uh, all for all is is its history and uh, it's very interesting and it's very important it's not very easy to do because sometimes you can do like a little bit you know boring things with it so you need to do it and study it in a clever way 
and uh, propose a product that is uh, uh, useful and dynamic and uh, that also is beautiful and have a touch of innovation in it but absolutely and uh, leather sometimes it's such a rich material that it's not that easy to put together to with leather a material that doesn't seem unbalanced so uh, so that's also important to choose the right wool or the right fabric to go with it to to make the perfect match but absolutely i love bonded surfaces i like there was in the pre-collection the pre-fall one of my favorite pieces was this trench coat it was like a man size man style trench coat and it was nappa combined with cotton and you really didn't understand when one thing was starting and one was finishing was very smooth and inside was the nappa plate the nappa was all doubled with a uh, uh, popeline like uh, check popeline and uh, it was all like flat and it was all like flowy and uh, it was like a seasonless a seasonless piece um, for me it was very beautiful because it had this movement had this fluidity that uh, and also at the richness of elaboration that was very uh, particular and very and very delicate as well. Obviously, uh, when you go to do this particular labor elaboration and works on leathers, but not only on leathers and everything, they, they the items become very expensive. So that can be a, a limit uh, because some certain process can be quite expensive and as. Uh, even if we do sell to the luxury market, there is always, always, always a big fight about prices. <laughs> but we... I, can, I can really, again, jump inside because there is another question, which is, uh, do you recycle all clients' garments? So imagine that you made this kind of items that you said was expensive, yes, but this is, uh, long lasting this can become a piece for collectors but you can also adjust do you also do this kind of typical uh, let me say personalization and bespoke attention to your own uh, pieces so we have a very good customer service inside the company that is very close to the customers so uh, we've helped um, every time we've received a request from a shop or a boutique, uh, we've helped the final customers to adjust or, you know, fix their clothes if they have a problem or whatever. Uh, you're touching an interesting uh, issue here because one of the projects I have in mind for the uh, very approaching future is of this kind which i'm not going to reveal very many details until they're clear to me and until we have shaped the form of this of this project but it's completely based on on recycling on upcycling and uh, on uh, reviewing existing items so um, this is a project a uh, side project like a capsule project for drone that will follow up with the main collection and uh, i can't reveal very many details details now but yes it's definitely something um, I have in mind and I want to work with it's enough you already gave us some curiosity to follow you yes. so I want to tell to the community last year please follow drone so I, I like it, this kind of desire that you created so this means unexpected of course well so how do you how do you play with unexpected so in a certain way with which is which was your disruption in this business which was the unexpected element with your business well actually it came pretty naturally when he, when we started with drum um, when it started it was a very small capsule collection anyway because we we, you know, we did, it was like a, a challenge. And so it was like a relatively small range of colors and a relatively small collection. And it was a spring summer and naturally it came to me to, you know, I didn't want to just, you know, I wanted to, to create around this material a different hype. So I decided to do everything you should not do in leather and do that for the summer, which was like t-shirts and uh, dresses and uh, blouses and oversized, um, items perforated, not perforated, in very thin materials, plain with surfaces, and uh, and I was like, 
I don't know where this is going, but, uh, you know, definitely is unexpected. And actually that was our strength because that was something new. That was something that people weren't expecting. And, uh, and so they dive, they did dive into it. And, uh, um, and then from there, um, this idea that has always been the basic idea of drum that was treating leather as if it was fabric. And so disrupting the main ideas of the main items that you can do in leather. Okay, leather is a perfecto jacket and I love them and I own them and I design them and they're very beautiful. Leather can be a leather sariana, again, it's beautiful, or a motorbiker jacket. And yes, it's beautiful, but what's beyond that? And is everything that is beyond that, that is, can be unexpected. And then how you treat it and how you play with volumes, how you play with silhouette, how you put it together and how you choose the colors for that and the face you put in them, what's the attitude? Because that's, you know, is the attitude you give to your clothes that creates what is unexpected. You need to give them a soul, otherwise they're like everything no, else. Nothing. So I like it in this case to, to jump in this picture, which really I love so much because you feel the soul, you feel the unexpected, you feel the way that you reinvent, and actually, I think this is so international in a certain way. I don't know, how, how, did, you, how did you choose this picture? How did you pick this kind of elements? Because it's so beautiful. I don't know, what, what do you see inside to this kind of reinvention? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the question. Like this picture in particular or like? No, in particular. I think this picture in particular is really resuming most of the things you said, talking about uh, genderless, talking about uh, having a soul, talking about treating leather, but starting with a concept point. Uh, maybe it's uh, all, first of all, I love the girl in these pictures, both of them, like Yunya, which is the one that you see better. She's like a crazy girl, she's lovely, <laughs> it's very funny. And there's a beautiful, awkward face, but it's one of those, beauty that is unexpected, exactly. Uh, I mean, these are all pictures that come from backstage. So they're actually, they're not staged. They're very, they come very natural, very, uh, uh, you know, it's the girls waiting to go out on the runway. And uh, I always develop this project of backstage emotional uh, vibe with uh, my team of digitals um, and photographers. And they're also my friends. And, um, they always get explained the feel of the collection and they try to transfer it in the pictures they take of the moment just before the shows the show so this is not like a staged picture it's it naturally came very like uh, uh, naturally and then you know we chose it because obviously had this kind of mystery into it. it's like daring it's like you you want to know more about this woman so that's the point you know I, I like to try to create at least my purpose is that to create figures and images of which you want to know more about you want to discover what's behind them what's their thoughts how they how they you know think how they live so um yeah, I mean, it's uh, about it being international. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't think about like, I want to build Rome as an international brand. I mean, I think about that in a way of the communication and the way I shape, obviously, uh, the collection and the taste of it, of course. But then it's, it's down to my instinct and down to my experience and down to my sensitivity and sensibility. Uh, um, that it, it comes as it is. Maybe it's my life experience. Maybe it's because I could see it. I mean, my biggest research is, is traveling, as I love traveling and sitting in the corners of sitting, just observing people. It's like one of the most beautiful things, observing people that are not in the fashion system at all. That, that are like, I love photography. I love photography books, documentary books. I love knowing the stories what, that is behind the photo books, that is about family, that is about a city, that is about a travel, that is about a culture or a landscape or whatever. And um, I don't know, sometimes often they are part of the inspiration of my project. So I think even in this case, we have a question that fits very well to what you said right now, because before you were talking about your experience in Japan, you give a little bit difference between the three different countries. So do you have any uh, tips about differences that you can see between the Chinese consumer 
or Japanese or South Korean. So in your travel, because you look people, they are not really fashion people. Maybe you catch something that you incorporate in your job. Well, I it's uh, the having being able to travel and to go to discover the markets and uh, and see what's what's on the ground it's a very important part of the research that when you can do it it's also very important it's very open minding because you can look online and street style as much as you can but sometimes being there is a different feel of course not everybody can do it and me myself i cannot do it every year or every season them. So um, I also need, you know, it's different uh, every time. But uh, yeah, for what is my experience, uh, the, the, there are differences. And I'm sure that the more you travel, the more you will find differences. But there are, I don't know, the Chinese market has grown massively. And also their awareness of brands has grown. If a few years ago, they were more based on the logo addiction and buying only what was logo and what was uh, like, main brands and you know they wanted to be branded now they're opening up to more independent brands and they're opening up to a different type of research and uh, they're opening up they have a lot of chinese designers um, that are pretty good and so they buy they're starting to buy also their own fashion and probably now with this pandemic even more i under, I, I guess uh, the japanese market uh, for what I have seen has been in a deep crisis for a long time and uh, from being very revolutionary, very disruptive and you know very, you, when I remember years ago when I was going in Japan it was so beautiful to go to Beams International or to go to Izetan or and they had incredible selections like very beautiful selections, something that you were dreaming of. They became more conservative in the years, uh, more close to a kind of American taste in a way, like a little bit more, um, less, uh, less opulent. Not opulent is not really the right word, but like different. And you know, that's an evolution they're going through. Korean is different again. They have a different kind of more fun. They like to have fun. So they're colorful, they like, but they're always elegant. There is also an elegant. Uh, as a base of their of their taste. This is for my perception, obviously. So if there is someone, some Korean or Japanese or Chinese people listening, sorry if I say something wrong, but that's my perception and uh, and uh, of of the market. And uh, but I've not been there. Last time I've been there was last year, so um, not been there very recently. But yeah, that's definitely there are differences, and uh, they need to be discovered. Is interesting to at least if you don't have the chance to go there, talk to people and listen to what they tell you and listen to the suggestions. So I like it also to jump in this kind of picture, which is sophistication and sensuality, which is another element that you, you take in consideration so strongly, uh, which is your way to be sensual and also sexy in drama. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, so for me, um, Sensuality, it's, uh, it's again important in, uh, in my collections and uh, obviously it's, it's a feeling and it's a perception and uh, I never like to be, uh, to create or to dress as well myself in ways that are like um, straightforward, sexy or sexy, let's say, but they can be sensual. What does, does that mean? It's what you think is central for your body and what is essential for your attitude. Um, so you can really wear like a big oversized man shirt with a big man jacket and, uh, and that can be central in the way you carry it, the way you uh, wear it. Um, so for me, it always comes from sometimes also simple lines uh, from something that can be a little bit more masculine that is not extremely feminine although i do design very feminine dresses but there is always this kind of sophistication that makes it um that makes it central in the way i think sensuality works um there is this uh probably you will have seen it but billy eilish 
released this beautiful video about body, um, the awareness of, of a woman's body, that is called Not My Responsibility. And I really, really was touched by it, by it because she was talking about, um, she, in this video, she basically says, uh, I mean, I have my body with my roundness or whatever, and uh, I don't want to be ashamed of it, right? I want to be proud of it. But if I dress, uh, in a way that I'm covered myself in layers or wearing big jumpers, then I'm not feminine. If I start taking off layers, I become straight away like I'm pointed at because that's like even too sexy or it's too like uh, pretending or pretentious. And so, and so the, the concept was, so what is it? I mean, it's like, it's based on your perception. So my way of being a woman needs to be based on your perception of a woman, no. That's not my responsibility. Your perception is not my responsibility. So a woman needs to be owner of her body, of her house and her sensuality and needs to own it and not be scared of it, but, but believe in it and, uh, and um, work with it and, uh, and not be scared. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get judged. I'm a woman and we can get judged for this and no. That's not what we need to fear. We need to be proud of what we are and we need to be uh, fearless in this. So I think you, we started with respect and then we, can, we, can I say, we ended with uh, sensuality and femininity, which is another very important point. So I want to thank you so much uh, because I really, we took one and more, more than one hour of your time. So there is one more question that some people ask, uh, when you will open a mono brand store, a mono brand shop of Drone? It's already there. It's in Milan and in Via Santo Spirito number 18. And uh, it's our, it's been there for three years, two years and a half. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's small, it's not very big, but it uh, has inside all the um, uh, soul of drone. So it's multi-material, it's made of layers, it's made of corners and hiding places, and uh, it's made of real material, like a bit of marble, a bit of, a bit of cement, a bit of velvet, a bit of um, metal, and uh, has these beautiful colors that are like getting in, and, uh, and there is like, um, a stripe of lead that uh, uh, kind of talks about our DNA. And uh, yeah, it's there. So go and visit it, please, when you're in Milan. Fantastic. I think fantastic because you ended explaining your world through materials, through feeling, and through touching. So thank I really have to thank you. I thank so much to all of our social community. I wish to have you as a guest another time because in our <laughs> travel world, maybe happen that we fly somewhere else in the world we don't know where because unexpected is what we like yeah. and thank you very much thank uh, you. very thank you very much for everybody thanks <laughs> thank you so much, much. Bye. 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 Bye.